Hey guys, I'm back with another video. Uh, I decided to keep this channel going and to keep making content for it because honestly, if you've seen the current landscape of uh, crypto YouTube and you just look up a project on YouTube, whatever it may be, uh, basically the only videos that are coming out are how much money can you make with this, uh, staking guide, uh, how much will this coin go up in value, right? And um, you know, those videos are good, they're fine, but one of the common things that I've always had a problem with when I'm looking up a new project that's crypto related is there's barely any people making uh, informational videos on what the project is, how it works, what gives us its value, right? Um, and why is it good in the first place? Uh, how much money it makes is great, right? But um, if you're in it for the long term and you want to invest in these projects uh, for years, uh, you, you're you not really looking at the short term and how much you can make now. It's more about the future and will the project hold up over time? Can it survive a bear market? Uh, etc etc so going forward my goal of this channel is really going to be providing no BS crypto videos um, doing deep dives on projects uh, and stuff like that so if you're interested make sure you leave a sub and uh, today I'm gonna be covering the helium network uh, but before I start because I suspect most of you guys know what this network is anyway uh, I wanted to kind of show you something which is the list of all the dead cryptos that have ever existed uh, and if I just keep going here, uh, you can just see how many dead cryptos there have been, right? I can just keep clicking and it's going to go and go and go and go. And you can see that there's over 2,000 entries, right? So 2,000 dead projects. And I would argue there's probably more, right? There's probably a lot more than 2,000. Uh, and if you look at the Wayback Machine for coin market cap, you can see in 2013, these were kind of like the top 10 coins, right? Um, obviously, you've got Bitcoin, Litecoin, and then a bunch of alts here. Now, if we go to next year, uh, some of them are still there, but most of the original ones aren't. And then you go to 2015, and you can see that most of the ones that were originally here in 2013 are not in the top 10 anymore. Uh, in fact, they're not even in like the top 30. Uh, and then you keep going up, 2016, same thing. And uh, it kind of cut me off here, so I can't show you anymore. But basically, my point really is that uh, crypto dies off, right? You've got the main big caps like Bitcoin, Litecoin, right? The big ones, Ethereum. Uh, but most of the alts, they don't last a bear cycle. And uh, every single cryptocurrency really follows Bitcoin. Uh, if Bitcoin, the cycle ends and it goes into a bear market, uh, all of the coins follow along with it. Uh, and generally, if unless the project is good, uh, most of those coins which had a mediocre use case uh, that maybe got pumped a little bit, they're not going to last. And so really my point with this is um, crypto is currently in a uh, really weird place. It's almost as if, especially with the old coins, it's almost as if you're just betting on penny stocks, as if it was on the stock market and hoping that one of those uh, companies ends up being uh, successful, ends up being profitable, and eventually its market cap increases and it makes you money, right? Uh, and right now it's just kind of picking a needle in a haystack. So there's so many projects that you can look at uh, and all of them might look promising but really if you've been into cryptocurrency for a, over a year um, you'll know that most of those projects don't end up, uh, end up surviving uh, and really my whole point in making a video like this for example a deep dive into helium is that you want to focus on projects which look like they're sustainable long term they have use cases they have um, because money doesn't just come out of nowhere, right? Uh, in order for the market cap of a coin to increase, there needs to be use cases, there needs to be people using it, um, and the coin needs to have some sort of value, something that gives it value. Uh, and when you're looking at a project, just always kind of think with an open mind and try and figure out um, where does the value come from with a project like this. Uh, and so today we're gonna be covering uh, the Helium Network, something that I actually really like. This is a project I'm passionate about. Um, obviously, in full transparency, I'm invested in uh, Helium. Uh, I own a few miners, and so obviously I'm biased. But 
I'm also not someone that likes losing money. So um, this is a project I've done a decent amount of research on. Uh, it's a project that I think has a lot of potential in the long term. Uh, and could it fail? Absolutely. Uh, this project can fail just like any old coin. But um, this project is also really unique. And I personally think it will be here to stay. So let's get right into it. So what is the Helium network? How exactly does it work? I'm sure a lot of you guys probably have a general idea of how it works, but for those of you who don't, or those of you who want a little bit more context on how exactly it works, I'll provide that here. So let's say I'm living somewhere in America with uh, the Lime scooters or any company that provides these electronic scooters that are on the sidewalk, and uh, I can use my app uh, that they made to rent one of these scooters for X amount of time, right? So this scooter here, it needs to be able to connect to the internet uh, in some sort of way, right? Because it needs to be able to know where it is. It needs to be able to know how long I've been using it. It needs to know who's using it, right? So I use my app and I need to connect to this device, right? So what could happen is it needs some sort of internet connection. And the way Helium solves this is, let's say that uh, around the corner on the street, someone's living in a house. And uh, I'm not an artist, guys. This is supposed to be like a little condo building or something like that. And let's say they have a miner set up here, right? So this is our miner. Uh, and they can actually, by deploying this hotspot slash miner on the Helium network, it sends a signal out to this scooter and so as I'm using the scooter it basically gives the miner and the helium network gives the scooter a small amount of bandwidth so that it's able to connect and it's able to know where it is it's able to know who's using it etc etc and as the scooter moves around uh, I'm using it I'm riding it on the street and the city there's a bunch of these miners these helium miners which keep pinging the scooter and providing data and bandwidth for it and that's just one use case right so uh, another use case would be let's say a more industrial purpose right so let's say uh, in the city there's some sort of piping system right uh, that goes around the city, maybe it carries water or it's drain, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and let's say in this pipe, right, uh, I don't even know if you guys can tell what I'm drawing, but let's say in this pipe there is some sort of uh, sensor, right, uh, this is the sensor, and let's say inside the pipe this sensor monitors some sort of, for example, uh, how much water is in this pipe or something like that, right? Uh, and it just monitors, make sure it doesn't overflow or something like that. So this sensor needs some sort of connection as well. This sensor needs to be able to uh, connect to the internet and be able to uh, essentially uh, bring up all of this data that it's collecting into some sort of dashboard or database where all of this data is stored. So how does it do that? Well, with the Helium network, the exact same way as a Lime scooter, someone in a building has a miner or a hotspot, right? This is the miner, and it sends out these uh, uh, this bandwidth and it sends out this uh, connection to the sensor. The sensor is able to connect and then it's able to essentially work and be connected and be able to transfer all of the data that it's connecting to the database, right? So that's a more industrial application, and there's actually a lot of these IoT sensors uh, deployed around. If you live in a city, for example, there's a lot of these sensors that are just deployed, and you won't even know that they're there, right? So uh, especially with industrial purposes, construction, a lot of stuff like that, um, people use these IoT sensors as they help out a lot, uh, especially with automation. And all these sensors need to be connected. Uh, and Helium is a great solution for that because not only can these hotspots uh, send out radio waves in very, very large distances, like multiple kilometers, uh, but as the network grows and there's more of these miners and slash hotspots deployed, there's going to be a lot more um, availability and coverage. So no matter where this sensor decides to be placed, if the network, the Helium network is big enough, there's going to be a bunch of uh, hotspots slash miners that can uh, ping it and can connect to it, right? And uh, it can allow it to work. So what separates Helium from the competition? And uh, before we talk about that, I just want to give a more general example that will probably help most people understand how exactly this works, right? So everyone or mostly everyone should probably have a cell phone, right, of some sort. 
And in order for the cell phone to be able to make calls and texts, it needs to be able to connect to a service provider, right? This is the service provider that you pay a monthly fee for. These service providers have gone ahead and spent a bunch of money installing antennas and satellites or whatever uh, to create their network. And every time you try and make a phone call or use your data or whatever, uh, your cell phone actually connects to these antennas and the co antennas connect to it and they send information back and forth. Now, for this company to do that, obviously they had to go out, they had to spend a bunch of money to build out their infrastructure around cities, around uh, less, uh, more rural areas, right? And uh, they spent a bunch of money and now they need to recuperate that cost. In order to recuperate that cost, they charge people uh, a certain monthly fee, which is usually pretty high, especially in Canada. In America, it's definitely less money, but it's still pretty high, right? You're paying a monthly fee uh, for this service. And um, it's basically the same thing with a decentralized system, except the difference is who pays that cost. So let's take Helium, for example. Obviously, they're not a service provider. They don't uh, provide cell signal, right? But what they do provide is a bandwidth connection to IoT devices. And instead of Helium going out and spending a bunch of money in every big city in North America and the rest of the world and deploying their own hotspots, right? Uh, that would cost a lot of money. And uh, especially when they're trying to keep it, uh, the, the fees that people pay to use this service low, it would be very hard for them to spend a bunch of money up front and then be able to charge very small amounts of fees for people to use their network. So what did they do? Instead, they offset the cost to the customer uh, or the consumer or the people mining, right? So if I wanna buy a miner, right? I, I spend a little bit of money and I get a miner, right? So basically, regular everyday people are actually responsible for investing and building out Helium's network, right? And this allows Helium to have very low upfront costs in terms of at least the investment for their network because they're not directly paying that. And as a result, it allows them to keep their fees very low uh, for the people who are actually going to be deploying IoT sensors and using the Helium network. Uh, cannot, there we go, low. That's the difference between a centralized and a decentralized service provider of any sort. Uh, I can definitely see maybe in the future we'll have decentralized uh, phone service providers of some sort. Maybe. I don't know exactly how that would work. But I definitely think that a lot of the centralized companies that currently exist that provide some sort of service is basically going to be able to be replicated on a decentralized basis where people are actually rewarded. because. Obviously, as a person who's buying a miner and you're paying the cost for Helium to deploy its network, you need to be rewarded. And so what you're rewarded with is the HNT token. And uh, every time you uh, set up a Helium hotspot, it starts earning a small amount of HNT over time. And that is your reward. You're basically getting your own return on investment uh, by setting up a hotspot. So why does it matter in the first place, right? Uh, the reason it matters is because there's actually so many use cases for Internet of Things devices, right? Uh, in fact, if you go to Helium's website and you go to use, uh, it takes you to their clients and um, they basically just explain uh, how different companies are using the Helium network to uh, use it and uh, get a service for it. And you can see that obviously they have like Lime, Salesforce, uh, Digital Matter, Carebrand. They've got a bunch of different companies using their network. And some of these are way smaller companies like little nonprofits, stuff like that. But you also have big players like Lime. Lime is a big scooter company. Um, Salesforce is also a huge company, right? Um, and the network is actually pretty small right now. So it's very interesting to see just how many people are using the network um, and the different use cases that people have figured out for it. Uh, like you can just, if you follow their Twitter, they tweet out a bunch of uh, different um, people who are using Internet of Things devices and using the Helium network. Um, in fact, recently I was um, looking at Barnacle, which is a company that provides very in-depth package tracking, uh, decided to use uh, Helium and um, it kind of has a, like a little promotional thing here. But basically my point is that 
as the network of helium expands and as more and more hotspots are um, put in homes and uh, the network is expanded, more and more companies are going to trust and want to use helium. Because the fact of the matter is that helium is way cheaper than any other service out there right now, as far as I know. Um, and obviously the reason for that is what we talked in the beginning, uh, which is the fact that helium did not have to invest in their own hotspots around every city and they didn't have to put that upfront cost. So they're they don't need to get um, as much of a return on investment and so their pricing for um, providing the service is way cheaper than any other provider out there um, and um, this barnacle company actually uh, they had a um, blog post about why they chose helium over uh, amazon sidewalk which is uh, something new that's come up very recently and um, amazon basically decided to uh, use their alexa devices to um, basically basically do what Helium's doing, uh, but in a much shorter range. Uh, and basically it's called sidewalk because the uh, range is way shorter than Helium and um, it basically only goes up to your sidewalk. Obviously, I'm sure that as time goes by, Amazon will keep investing in this and um, may even try to do what Helium's doing someday. Uh, but this program really isn't anything that should concern you if you are looking to invest in Helium. If anything, it uh, just proves the use case and proves that um, there is money in this. Uh, and uh, currently, Amazon's very behind anyway. So, you know, if you search up Amazon Sidewalk and you go to news, you can just see uh, immediately. It's like privacy concerns. Um, can you opt out? Should you opt out? Why you should opt out, right? So there's this big privacy concern because uh, people were automatically opted into the Amazon Sidewalk program if they had these devices which were compatible with it. And uh, Amazon doesn't pay you anything for providing this service. They're taking your bandwidth. Um, they're taking this device which you bought and uh, basically making you use it for a different purpose. Obviously, you can opt out, but it's a bit of a process. And uh, really, this is such a good thing for Helium, in my opinion, because not only does it prove the use case, um, but it also doesn't really compete with Helium in any way. So it's like the best of both worlds. So I really quickly want to talk about the Helium team. Uh, so basically, a lot of people don't know this, but Helium was actually founded in 2013. So even though the whole crypto aspect and the whole miner aspect is new, uh, actually very, very new, the actual company Helium was started way back in 2013. Uh, and currently you can see that Amir Halim is the CEO and co-founder. Uh, Mark Nishdam, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, is the CTO, and then Frank Mong is the COO. Uh, and all of these people have public uh, LinkedIn profiles. You can see that Amir worked uh, at EA for a little bit. Uh, he then worked at uh, Global Gaming League. Uh, he was then the CTO and co-founder of a different company, and then he started Helium after that as well. Uh, Mark is also on LinkedIn. Uh, he has a lot of experience uh, in terms of just having been in tech companies. Uh, so I'm just gonna scroll through it here. Uh, he even worked as a senior engineer at Yahoo. So the team does know what they're doing. At least it seems like it. They have a lot of experience. Uh, this is their chief operating officer. Uh, and you can also see that he has uh, a lot of experience as well. And uh, these aren't just like fake LinkedIn profiles. It's a team of people who actually know what they're doing. They also have a board with advisors and you can see all the people here. I'm not really going to cover the team that much because it's very obvious to me at least that uh, this is a legitimate group of people who know what they're doing. Uh, and if you want to find out more information on them, they're all on Twitter. Uh, they have LinkedIn's and uh, you can look into them yourself if you want to. As of July 2021, how is the network doing? How is Helium doing uh, as a company, as a blockchain, as a network, as a service, right? So currently we are at 76,000 hotspots. Uh, and if you actually look at the trend, it won't really let me show you a lot, but uh, you can just see the exponential growth, right? It's just thousands of hotspots being added every single day uh, and the network is rapidly growing. Uh, currently, there most of the actual hotspots are on back order, and uh, I believe there's probably 200,000 plus hotspots on back order, which are waiting to be manufactured and shipped out to customers. So the 76,000 hotspot number is a little misleading, just because there's so many hotspots that are currently bought 
but haven't been received yet. And um, I definitely think that this hotspot number will probably hit 200,000 by maybe like quarter one 2022 or quarter two 2022. Um, but yeah, you can just see that currently there's so many hotspots, uh, especially in North America. Uh, Europe is packed full of it. Um, and then you've got some other like smaller areas with a little bit of a uh, activity. Uh, Rio has some. Uh, and yeah, this is just a constantly growing network. Uh, and you can just basically go into any city uh, in America, San Fran, um, go in here, right? Like you've just got so many hotspots that are deployed. Uh, all these green dots are little hotspots. Uh, and yeah, you can just see that um, it's like the entire city here is packed full of hotspots and these are hexes so there's multiple hotspots in some of these like you can click uh, these have one um, but I'm sure if I keep clicking like this hot uh, this hex here has two hotspots um, this hex has three of them right um, and there's a lot of uh, hexes that probably have like six or seven um, but yeah you can just see there's a lot of hotspots currently deployed and a lot more are on the way now, another thing that's been recently introduced into uh, the Helium blockchain is this thing called validators. Now, originally what used to happen is um, out of all of these hotspots that are currently deployed, uh, a few would be chosen uh, as part of a consensus group. And basically those specific hotspots would be in charge of um, just validating everything and uh, writing the blocks to the blockchain, I believe, right? Um, however, as the network has grown and as thousands of hotspots are added to the network every single day, um, this consensus group mechanism started to be faulty. Um, and the network became pretty slow and continued to get slower as more and more hotspots were added. So as a result, the developers of Helium realized that they needed to do something to fix it. And um, what they decided to do is get rid of the consensus group uh, mechanism, which uh, a lot of people were frustrated by because if you were picked to be part of a consensus group, you could earn hundreds of HNT in just a single day. Um, and at like 12 to $15 per HNT coin, you can imagine that you can make like thousands of dollars just in a day uh, from being chosen for this consensus group. And so a lot of people I understand are kind of mad about that, but I think that these validators will be good overall for the long term because the idea is now that you don't have this, uh, this consensus group anymore, uh, you're essentially taking all of the tokens that were going to be awarded for the consensus group and putting them into validators. And the way validators work is you basically have um, a node which is uh, usually run on a pretty beefy computer of some sort, um, and then you would also have to stake 10,000 HNT. Uh, which is a lot of money. And so basically by creating, uh, by becoming a validator and staking your HNT, uh, you take the role of processing everything, uh, validating all the transactions on the blockchain um, and making sure everything is flowing smoothly uh, and that the network is working well. Because obviously with a regular hotspot, um, the tech behind it and the processor and the RAM, it, generally they're not very powerful units, right? Uh, and um, as the network grows, they can't keep up and um, being part of the consensus and whatnot, right? So with these beefier computers and this uh, validator uh, program, you, the, apparently the network will be faster. We still have yet to see if it will, um, but I definitely think that having that extra processing power and having over a thousand validators uh, currently will really help that out. And um, as of today, which is July 3rd, um, Helium has said that validators will be going live on the 7th of July. So hopefully that definitely fixes the network as it's been really slow recently. Um, and um, in the future, I think that these validators will definitely help out in the long term. And I actually think that to some extent, it may be possible to see slightly better or at least more consistent rewards uh, from your miner um, because the network will be less... Um, overloaded and uh, I think that it will allow people to have more consistent rewards over time. So we've talked about Helium, where it's at currently, now let's talk about the future of Helium. Uh, obviously this is all speculation, there's no way to accurately predict the future. 
I'm just making my best educated guess based off of what I've seen currently and where I can imagine the project being in the future a couple of years from now. So the first thing I want to talk about is this infamous having that everyone keeps talking about on social media. Uh, on the Explorer, you can see that it's currently 28 days until the having, which is on August 1st, 2021. So what does the having even mean? Basically, as of HIP 20, uh, they propose to restrict the total amount of HNT that can be mined. So you can see that currently uh, around 60 million HIT can be mined. But as of August 1st, 2021, that total supply and the total amount that can be mined is going to be cut in half to 30 million. And then two years later, it's going to be 15. Another two years later, it's going to be 7 million, uh, 7.5 million. Uh, and it keeps going and going and going until eventually it gets to like 3.6 total HNT tokens that can be mined, which is like nothing, right? Um, I get the concern, right? I get the concern because obviously as more and more hotspots enter the ecosystem, there's less, there's more rewards that need to be shared with everyone. So out of the total 60 million, um, the supply gets diluted and everyone is going to be, um, the more hotspots that enter, the less rewards you get basically is what I'm trying to say. And to further add on to that, when Helium halves, uh, there's going to be even less rewards for everyone because there's more miners and then the total amount that can be mined is less at the same time. So I know this is keeping a lot of people from investing in the project, from buying a hotspot, uh, and people are just generally concerned about this. And to some extent, I am too, because without a doubt, profitability will decrease. And um, it's not even just the having as more and more hotspots enter the ecosystem, the overall amount of HNT you're going to earn is going to decrease. Uh, there's no way to avoid that. The only way really to offset that is by having a good uh, location to mine, which we'll get into later, uh, but generally it will decrease over time. Uh, that being said, Helium is not the only crypto that has. In fact, Bitcoin is one of the most popular uh, coins that has a deflationary aspect to it in terms of it having. So if you look at this chart here, uh, you can see that Bitcoin has and then over time it increases in price. Then it halves again, and over time it increases in price. So just like with Helium, this halving basically means that the total mining rewards are decreased. Uh, and you can see that Bitcoin over time has increased in price after the halvening, uh, and it, this is slightly outdated, uh, but in general it does increase in value. Uh, and the reason for that is really simple. It's just very uh, basic supply and demand principles. If you have less of something, then it's worth more. Or generally speaking, it should be worth more uh, if the demand is there. And um, as less and less Bitcoin is in circulation and exists, you know, Bitcoin gets lost, people forget about it, maybe they lose their wallet, whatever, right? There's less and less Bitcoin in circulation, there's less of it being mined and added into the total circulation, the total supply of Bitcoin, and thus its value is worth more. Helium is going to be very similar, right? Uh, so you've got a total circulating supply currently roughly 88 million. Uh, this will keep increasing as more and more helium is mined, but over time, um, less and less is going to be mined. More of uh, HNT is going to be burnt, right? So that's less HNT in circulation. And um, over time, this deflationary aspect of helium should actually make it go up in price, theoretically speaking, obviously. Um, and so, really, when you're mining, you might, let's say you were mining one HNT per day, just a rough example, right? One HNT per day. Um, after the happening and after more and more hotspots get added, you might be making 0.5 HNT per day, right? But if the value of HNT, the actual price of it, goes up, then that 0.5 HNT could be worth a similar amount to mining one full HNT, like before, right? If that makes sense. So over time, as HNT increases in value, even if you're mining less coins, you actually might still be making the same amount, if not more, right? That's my guess, at least as to what might happen. So hopefully that shared a little bit uh, more about the happening. Um, obviously, it's all theoretical. There's no guarantee that Helium will go up in price. But 
generally speaking, um, when you have a deflationary coin, uh, it should go up in value over time as the rewards are halved. Uh, and we've seen that firsthand with Bitcoin and we have a lot of data to work with uh, and to make some educated guesses based off of it. So hopefully that provides some more insight. Hopefully you're not as concerned about the happening as you may have been before. And um, yeah, hopefully you guys understand a little bit more. Going back to the future of Helium, uh, what can we expect, right? So we've talked about the happening already, but that really hasn't talked about the future of Helium. Helium right now is in a really good place in my opinion. Uh, it's got a lot of attention from social media. A lot of people are interested in the project. Uh, there's a lot of um, institutional uh, money that seems to be going into the project. I've seen a lot of companies that have been buying up thousands and thousands of hotspots and uh, essentially redistributing them for free um, to people who may have not been able to buy one. Um, and they basically share the revenue with them in exchange for having that person host that hotspot in their home, right? Um, so there's a lot of institutional demand, it seems like, at least people who have money to invest. Um, there's a lot of people who have been putting these uh, helium hotspot miners in uh, on top of mountains and whatnot. Uh, and just a lot of traction has been gained by helium and their network. Um, and now they have this thing called uh, DUI, which is the Decentralized Wireless Alliance. It's basically kind of like an organization that um, is in association with helium. Uh, and they've been launching grants uh, for people that want to expand the network, the Helium network, um, give it more use cases, uh, create um, dApps for it, uh, and just basically expand the ecosystem. And so over time with these grants, I can totally see more and more developers hopping on board, developing applications that are useful to, uh, to the network, that provide value to the network. Um, and I definitely think that um, in the next couple years, the actual development and the amount of things you're going to be able to do with these HNT coins uh, is going to be a lot more than you can do now, right? Which further adds value to the coin. Um, and especially with the happening and the decreased supply, uh, over time, I can definitely see that increasing the price of the coin as well. So another thing that I see for the future of Helium is um, obviously the increase in the overall network, right? And what I mean by that is the increase in hotspots. So if you actually look at the Explore, you can see that um, roughly last year in July, there was around uh, 4,000 hotspots, right? And as you keep going, 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 you see that the hotspots just keep increasing over time. And uh, especially after we hit like April, there was like some sort of catalyst. I think it's just because so many YouTubers started making videos on it. It just started growing exponentially, right? Um, until today, which is uh, we have like roughly 75, 76,000 hotspots now. And uh, the growth has been just insane. And I think, as I mentioned earlier, there's so many uh, hundreds of thousands of units of these hotspots that are on back order. And eventually, I think we're going to just keep seeing this exponential growth in the network, more and more hotspots being added. Um, and especially as new manufacturers come in, which I'll talk about later, but as more and more manufacturers of these hotspots come in, um, the more they alleviate this backlog of um, uh, hotspots that are ordered, that are paid for, but have not been delivered yet. And as more and more competition comes, they're going to be fulfilling these orders faster and faster, and more and more people will be able to actually get their their hands on a hotspot and will be able to deploy it. And so why does this matter? Uh, like I'm sure a lot of people probably think, oh, the more hotspots we get, the more, um, uh, the less I'll be making, which is true in a way. But at the same time, as the network actually grows and more and more hotspots are added, the more the legitimacy of Helium as a company grows and the more that people, uh, actual companies will trust it and will want to use it because not only is Helium very cheap and affordable for companies to use, um, as the network grows, it's going to be a no brainer for them. It's going to have coverage everywhere in the world, or at least in most parts of the world It's going to have insane good coverage and you're going to be paying very small amounts of money to actually use the network and as helium gets more and more customers and gets more and more companies using its network it's going to be able to transition its current mining model which basically most of your current rewards are coming from proof of coverage verifying uh, other hotspots around you witnesses beacons stuff like that into actually giving rewards to hotspot owners for uh, allowing and providing service to these companies 
companies with their IoT devices. So that's going to be a pretty big transition. And uh, over time, I think we'll see more and more and more companies using it. Uh, the hotspots are actually going to do their job and provide service to these companies as opposed to just basically only getting rewards for uh, verifying other hotspots around you. So there's a few other things that are kind of going to happen in the future of Helium and I'm just going to kind of speed run it and skim through it. One thing is if you look at this chart for the HNT distribution over time, you can see that currently uh, network data transfer is a pretty small amount of the total rewards you get. Uh, the rest is proof of coverage, which is basically how you're making most of your rewards currently. Uh, and then you have the consensus group, which is now being turned into validators, which we already talked about. And you can see that over time, as the network grows and expands, uh, the plan is to have data transfer actually be most of the re rewards that are given to uh, the miners and the people who have Helium hotspots. So this is exactly what we're talking about. As the Helium uh, network grows and more and more uh, customers are using the network, uh, the rewards for actual data transfer and providing the service to companies is going to increase. And um, just another thing too is you can see that uh, in the future it's planned to have data only hotspots. And basically the difference between a data only hotspot and a regular hotspot, which some of you guys may already have uh, in your home or looking to buy, is that there will be no proof of coverage for these data only hotspots. And the only rewards you're going to be able to get really is through transferring data, as we can see here, the network data transfer. Obviously, this is still really early. Um, it's not most of the details aren't even fully released yet on how these will work. But there have been a few that have popped up and you can actually set them up right now. Uh, that being said, this is something that's planned in the future and will be worked out more in the future. But these data only hotspots give us a little bit of insight of uh, what Helium is thinking about long term. And if we compare it with this chart here, you can see that their goal clearly for the future is to basically most of the minor rewards are just going to be this data transfer. Another thing which is extremely exciting in my opinion is the path to 5G, right? Uh, Helium is actually going to be launching uh, its own 5G network and this is going to be built on top of the current Helium network. Essentially it seems like currently they're selling this one uh, 5G hotspot is going to act exactly as a regular Helium hotspot uh, doing proof of coverage and all of that stuff. It's going to be able to do data transfer but on top of all of these features it's also going to be able to provide 5G coverage. Uh, now again this is still really early and we don't know a lot of details on this, uh, but there has been a wait list which uh, people could uh, pre-order essentially the miner and once it's ready and it's ready to uh, be manufactured and sent out to people, uh, they're going to be able to get it and I think that over uh, time it's going to be more and more of these are going to be available. Maybe it's not just going to be Freedom Fi that manufactures it, it's going to be other companies as well. So it's very exciting and um, if you actually read the wording, uh, it says Helium 5G will be the second major wireless network that the Helium network supports. So to me it almost sounds like they have other networks that they're thinking of building on top of the current Helium network even uh, after 5G has been implemented. So maybe in the future they're going to offer more and more services that are built on this Helium network. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably a little bit uh, skeptical or worried that um, this 5G is kind of going to leave the regular Helium network behind. But from what we know is that you're actually going to be able to upgrade your current Helium miner uh, to support 5G as well, or at least that's planned. Again, very early, we still don't know a lot of the details. So if you're interested in this 5G feature, make sure that you're constantly following the Helium blogs uh, for all new updates. But really, this 5G is extremely exciting, as I mentioned earlier, because uh, it gives a lot more use cases to Helium. Uh, and um, it just it's really good because 5G is something that a lot of different companies are spending millions and millions, if not billions on uh, creating their own infrastructure for it. So if Helium could kind of use this decentralized uh, kind of concept and capitalize on it and expand a 5G network with very minimal costs, it's going to be really exciting and it's also going to be um, allow people to use 5G service for much cheaper than what other companies would offer. Um, so yeah, very early, but also very exciting. 
So now we get to the juicy part, what everyone cares about, the coin value, the helium token value. So very exciting. This is something which I was looking at helium pretty early on, probably around this March area. And I was just curious how the price is going to react, like how will the token value react over time. And you can see that it spiked up to around 15 and went all the way up to $18. And with most crypto projects that kind of get a huge increase in the value of its coin, usually after that, it kind of goes down and crashes down a bit and settles on like an equilibrium point. However, with Helium, we really didn't see that. It went up to 18, bounced down to around 12, and then it's basically just been sitting between this like 15 to $10 range. And another really good thing about it is that if you notice, uh, Bitcoin dropped off a lot. Like it went from basically 60K down to around 31 to 35. Uh, it hit 40 for a little bit and then it went back down. So. As I mentioned earlier, uh, basically every crypto project follows the price of Bitcoin, for better or worse. And with Helium, you can see that even when Bitcoin and the entire market crashed, it still was able to just have a really good resistance at $10 and then it went back up. And really, I don't see this token falling under 10. I, I think that with the burning mechanism and just the tokenomics and the way this utility token is designed, uh, it's been really stable and it seems like it's really well thought out. Uh, and the price has been stable, which is really, really good. Now, does that mean the price can't drop under 10? Absolutely not. It can and it could do it tomorrow, right? For whatever reasons. But so far, it's been steady and uh, it's been really good. There's been very good consistent volume. Uh, it has died down a little bit, but generally the volume's there and um, the token's been performing quite well. So earlier I mentioned something called burning, uh, and I'm not sure if all of you guys know what burning is, so I'll quickly explain it. Uh, if you wanna read a little bit more about it, I would definitely encourage you to do so on the Helium website, uh, because if I try to explain the entire concept, it would take a long time and this video's already super long as it is but basically the way it works is you have helium the HNT token which is this right but you also have a second token which is this data credits DC uh, it's not actually listed but this DC credit is pegged to this amount which is basically a lot less than a cent um, and it's always going to be worth this amount so if someone wants to use the Helium network, they basically have to use these data credits, which are created by quote unquote burning HNT. And what this means is that you basically take HNT, whatever its current value is, and then you create these data credits with it. Um, and to create these data credits, the HNT is burnt, which means that basically it disappears, right? You take the amount of data credits you need, uh, and you use the HNT tokens to pay for it. And once you create these data credits, you can swap back to HNT. So that HNT is permanently gone, which redu uh, which increases this deflationary aspect to the HNT token, removes its supply, uh, and um, that kind of causes the price to be stable and to increase over time as there's less and less HNT available in circulation let's talk about getting a miner, right? I'm sure this is what everyone cares about because if you want to participate in this project, nothing I said earlier even matters, right? Uh, and currently you can see the approved manufacturers for hotspots. You've got a few, right? You've got Bobcat, you've got uh, Calchip, Nebra, the common ones that everyone currently knows about. And if you try and buy a miner with these companies, you're basically going to be waiting 12 to 20 weeks if you can even buy one currently, right? But there is a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, guys, because um, due to HIP 19, which is basically um, almost like this rule book that uh, manufacturers have to follow, uh, basically any manufacturer that wants to participate, if they follow these rules, they can actually apply and um, become a manufacturer for helium hotspots. And if we check the pull request, which is actually how you apply to become a manufacturer, you can see just how many different companies are looking into it. Uh, you can see three days ago, seven days ago, 10 days ago, 14 days ago, every couple of days, there's a new application. And um, there's a bunch of new companies that are actually looking into this and want to become a manufacturer because they know how much money is in this right now and how many people are interested in buying one. So if we look at SenseCap, for example, 
uh, they applied on May 11th and um, they were actually a very uh, established IoT company and were able to basically from May 11th uh, to get everything approved and go through all of the different processes uh, and they are basically ready to launch the SenseCap uh, hotspots. I think that in the next few weeks they're probably going to start selling them and uh, they already have an initial batch that has been pre-manufactured so if you actually are lucky enough and are able to buy one it will be shipped to you within a week right and after that they're going to start taking pre-orders for the second batch which they're going to start manufacturing after the first batch is sold out and um, the people who buy a pre-order will probably be able to get um, a sense cap miner way before uh, for example a bobcat which is going to take 12 to 20 weeks from the date that you order it so there is light at the end of the tunnel guys it's not just sense cap um, there's actually a document which tracks all of these new manufacturers uh, and you can see that there's a bunch of new ones uh, and you can see all the steps that they have to go through uh, and um, eventually all of these different manufacturers will start producing miners their own version of the miners uh, and there's going to be a bunch of competition and um, I'm sure that you're going to be able to buy whatever miner you want and you're not going to have to wait that long. So there is light at the end of the tunnel. I think that if you're really committed to getting a miner, you should be able to buy one in a month or two or three, right? Uh, and it's not going to take that long. You're going to be able to get away before December. It, so it's good, right? Like you are able to buy a miner if you try and if you're active and you try to monitor discords and uh, actively track documents like this uh, you should be able to get a miner if you're persistent and you're vigilant really quickly i wanted to talk about uh, mining rewards and profitability right let's say you were able to get a miner and now you're thinking about how to set it up so for the long term right how do you set it up so it as more and more hotspots enter the network and um, the rewards are halved, how do you keep your profitability up to as much as you can, right? In my opinion, uh, what you wanna do is you wanna provide value to the network, right? If you're providing value, then you're going to be rewarded for it. That's the whole point of Helium. Uh, and the way the coin and the mining algorithm is coded is the people who provide the most value will make the most rewards, no matter what. So I would definitely encourage you to do more research on this in general, but from a very general perspective, you want to be in a good location. Uh, I definitely think that in the future, as more and more manufacturers enter the space and it becomes very easy to make to get a hotspot in your house, right? Uh, locations are going to become more valuable than the actual hotspots themselves, right? And it might seem silly to say that now, but I'm telling you, when more and more manufacturers enter the space and more people are able to get these hotspots, the only way you're going to be able to separate yourself from everyone else who has a hotspot is by having a good location. And um, the location will be the most important thing. So generally speaking, uh, you want to be uh, high up and you want to make sure that you're not obstructed by, for example, other buildings uh, and different things. So you want to be in a location with a decent amount of miners, but also not too close to miners as well. Because if you're right next, for example, let's say you're right here and let's say you place your hotspot right in the middle here, right? This is probably like a few hundred meters in between this hotspot this hotspot and this hotspot so in this location that wouldn't be the greatest that being said let's say you're over here right and then you can connect to this hotspot here this hotspot this hotspot this hotspot that would be a way better location and again guys it's going to take a long time to dive into the technicals and explain exactly what the best location is but i'll provide a link in the description to a really good blog post uh, that kind of talks about how to get the most out of your miner and how to uh, pick a good location and um, I, I would advise you to be creative with it. Like maybe if you don't live in the best location, maybe your friend does, right? Maybe it will be more profitable for you to put it in your friend's house, give them a little bit of the revenue in exchange for getting access to their location. So be creative with it, try and do some research and figure out how you can provide the most value to the network. 
Uh, as for earnings with your Helium hotspot, uh, uh, Crypto Gossip made a really good video kind of outlining uh, what the reasonable rewards you can expect are long term. So I would definitely recommend checking this video out. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description. Uh, and I think he provides a lot of value with this video and it should give you a better, more reasonable perspective of how much you can expect to earn. So finally, let's finish up this extremely long video with the pros and cons of the Helium network. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to leave a timestamp here so whoever's bored can just switch to this final too long didn't read kind of uh, area of the video. So anyway, uh, let's look at the pros of the Helium network first, right? So the first one is it's an awesome idea. Obviously, like this is definitely one of the coolest implementations of a blockchain project that I've seen, like hands down. Uh, not to mention how rewarding it is for someone who participates in the network. Uh, so the second thing is it's decentralized, right? So there's good and bad things that come with this, but um, in the end, it lets people profit off of the Helium network for providing a service. Uh, and at the same time, it keeps the cost to use the network low as well. Uh, another one is that uh, mostly everyone gets to participate, mostly just because obviously it's very hard to get a miner right now. Uh, but in general, there's no ASICs, right? There's no um, big institutions that uh, are buying up a bunch of these specialized miners uh, and just setting it up in a big warehouse uh, where obviously the barrier of entry to do something like that is extremely high and you would need a lot of capital. So everyone, if you can buy a miner, basically everyone can participate. They can put one in their home. And um, the fact that you can only have one miner in one location uh, is also really good deterrent from big companies just buying a bunch of these and just setting up like a thousand miners in one house, right? So the next uh, pro is that it's very profitable, at least for right now. Um, generally, if you have a decent location, uh, you're able to make a, you know anywhere between 30 to 100 HNT as of now. Uh, obviously, we've talked about it. Uh, long term, those numbers will change and the profitability, at least in terms of how much HNT you're earning, will go down. Uh, another thing is that the team is really good. Uh, it's backed by VC. So the team, they seem like they know what they're doing. Their developers are good. The mobile app works uh, pretty well. I mean, obviously there's some bugs, but it's a new project. Uh, the mobile app is nice. It looks good. Uh, their Helium Explorer is also really good. Uh, and it just seems like the developers and the general team know what they're doing. Uh, it seems like uh, they come from a long line of uh, little startups and uh, tech companies in general, and they have experience. And that's also always great with a project like this. You need a good team to um, capitalize on the vision and the idea and execute on it. So, so far, Helium's been doing that amazingly. Uh, and obviously they're backed by, for example, Google Ventures and a bunch of other VC firms. And usually you won't get backed on a project like this and people aren't just going to give you money unless the idea is good uh, and uh, the team is also good and is able to execute. So the fact that Google Ventures backed Helium just says a lot to me personally. Finally, uh, there's just a really good use case with this project, uh, with this IoT network. Then on top of that, we're getting the 5G at some point. And um, in general, it's going to expand and expand. They can offer more and more services and it's a good use case. Uh, as we've seen with the price, it's also very stable. So you don't have to worry about the, like the price of HNT going up to like $20 and then falling down to a dollar after that, right? So for the long term, it looks looks good, uh, it's got a good use case, and the price has been stable. Now for the cons. So the first thing is that uh, nothing is guaranteed, right? So basically what I mean by this is maybe the network fails, maybe there's a big competitor that comes up that does it better than Helium uh, and wipes them out, right? Everything is possible with something like this, especially with a company that's as early as Helium is as well. Um, obviously, the actual Helium company has been around for a while, but um, this network and the crypto and everything around it is pretty new. So there's still a lot of things that can happen. There's a lot of risk with this. Uh, don't think that if like there is no risk because there is always risk no matter what, especially with newer companies. So nothing's guaranteed. Another con right now is that you need 
at least a little bit of technical knowledge to really get the most out of the network and the miner. Um, if you don't really understand anything about computers, you just, you like this, you see you can make some money off it and you buy a miner, it might be a little hard for you. Um, I've set up a few miners now and um, I've seen my friends set up a miner there's issues, right? It's not just plug and play, as many people say. Uh, the, sometimes the uh, hotspots just get out of sync. Sometimes there's issues, they need to be reset. Um, there's issues with it not working, right? So you need to have a little bit of technical knowledge, uh, especially with this new issue, which is uh, this relay mode that a lot of people are talking about. You need to know how to port forward, right? So make sure before you commit and you buy a hotspot that you know how to port forward because you will need to uh, in order to get the most out of your miner. Uh, and if you need any more help getting rid of the relay connection, there's a lot of guides online. Uh, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to cover that. Uh, it's also very hard to get a miner right now, guys. Like it's very hard, as I said, 12 to 20 weeks, but we expect this to get better over time. So in the next few months, hopefully some more manufacturers pop up, which are able to fill demand uh, and it becomes easier to get a miner. And finally, this is something which I don't think a lot of people consider, but uh, there could be unforeseen changes. Uh, yes, Helium is decentralized. Yes, a lot of the things that they pass uh, in terms of new things to the network go through an approval process. But at the end of the day, you're at the mercy of Helium, the company, right? So just a quick example of this is consensus groups. Originally, Helium thought that the consensus group uh, mechanic would work. Uh, and uh, a lot of people liked having that little lottery aspect to it where if your miner was selected to be part of a consensus group, you can make a bunch of money in a day, right? Obviously, due to the network stability, uh, they had to change that and get rid of consensus groups, right? And now you have to stake at least 10,000 HNT to become a validator uh, unless you do a pooled staking, but that gets more complicated. So. Obviously, you're at the mercy of the company. If they want to make a change, they likely will, for better or for worse, in terms of mining. So keep that in mind. Uh, and besides that, uh, another thing that I didn't really write down, but uh, right now the network, network is really slow. And um, in fact, with some of my miners, I've seen that it's the activity is being weird. Uh, the mining rewards are very inconsistent, and uh, the network definitely seems very slow. Hopefully, after the validators get launched, uh, that improves everything, it makes it faster, makes rewards more consistent, and there's less glitches all around. Uh, so we'll see what happens after July 7th when validators launch, but just keep that in mind that as of now when I'm making this video, the network is really, really slow, guys. So we're back to where we started now. Um, I hope that after watching this incredibly long and probably boring video that you guys got some value out of it, that you learned a little bit, even if everything wasn't completely new to you, as le at least you would have a better understanding of how the network works. Uh, and if you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe. I'm going to be trying to make more uh, cryptocurrency based videos that provide value and don't just talk about the price of a coin and how much you can make. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much guys for the support and uh, I'll see you next time. Also, before I go, please check out the Helium white paper. Uh, it's not super long, it's 20 pages, and um, it gets really technical at points, but maybe just skim through it and just read about the network and how it works, uh, and um, I promise you, you will know a lot more about Helium after reading this white paper, so definitely encourage you guys to do that. Until next time, peace.